As you've seen in my last video, I just installed some new injectors and now I also install a different wastegate actuator with a 0.3 bar spring and today I'm going to show you how to actually tune a boosted car. We did this on an NA car before, I told you how to set up your tune for the uh, for a turbo setup, so how to adjust your VE table, adjust your spark table and adjust your AFR target table for using a turbocharger so that you don't have uh, a base map that actually does uh, make your car or make your engine go boom. And as always, if you don't feel comfortable with doing this yourself or you need help, need have any questions, need advice or just want any tuning services done in general, send me a message on Instagram. A link to that is in the description below and in the first pinned comment. We are going to do some auto tuning. So we are going to tune the uh, car with auto tune in combination with some manual adjustments, just as I did, as I said, in the auto tune episode where I did tune the car uh, with a naturally aspirated setup. But there is some difference here because obviously I have some bigger injectors and the VE table is going to look different than on the NA setup as well. And as for driving, there's also some things you have to look out for too. First of all, what I did, I put in a lot more fuel in the boosted cells, so above 100 kPa. I have scaled it from 110 to 180 because I'm not planning to make more boost than 0.8 bar or about 12 PSI. So I have set the tables up so that it only scales up to there. Um, I'm planning to make around 0.6 or 0.7. You always want to go a bit above that, uh, as I said in the video in the previous video where we set that up. For the beginning, I just put in 150 any, uh, everywhere. While yes, this isn't strictly necessary, you could scale it from, I think maybe 130 to 150 up to the limiter. But uh, I just wanted to be safe and put in 150 everywhere. That's basically just to make sure to put a higher value in there uh, to make sure the engine is not going to run lean because in a boosted scenario or when you are applying boost to the engine, it's safer to run more fuel, so richer than to run less fuel. You might um, use a little bit more fuel during the tuning process, but that's not going to be a huge, going to make a huge difference as this is going to be negated when you are done tuning and have adjusted everything to the way you want or need it to be. So now I just am driving around with the auto tune difficulty set to medium. So there is going to be pretty many changes made in a very short period of time, as you can see. On the bottom right corner, our uh, cell change is going pretty nuts and it's changing a lot of cells um, while I'm driving. This is a good thing because then if the ECU sees that one cell or one particular region in the map is very, very rich or very, very lean, it is allowed to change that region very quickly. As for with on a harder difficulty, that wouldn't be the issue. I have now driven a bit and I'm just smoothing out the cells a bit where I'm thinking the ECU will put in more fuel automatically. I'm actually putting in additional fuel so that it doesn't re uh, run lean and where I see that it pulls out a lot of fuel, I'm actually smoothing that to the previous cells on lower RPMs or on less load so that um, I kind of predict the auto tune a bit before it does anything. Then I switch to a harder difficulty, in this case hard, where uh, the changes are actually not as big and the issue will take longer um, to be confident in a change before it makes it. So the VE tables will change slower, but they will be more accurate to what's actually represented in the AFR ratio, so in what the AFR sensor sees. So I'm also driving around for 20 to 30 kilometers like that. It is necessary to drive around like this um, longer. Or, and also, when you do, please make sure to not do any long pulls 
and on the at the beginning just go into boost very slightly for very short periods of time so that if anything runs lean or so that the ECU has time to adjust or that you can adjust afterwards if you have a look at things. Because if you would do like longer pulls and stuff that could lead to problems where the engine would run lean and you may melt a piston or something. So it's recommended to just hit lower boost levels and with time when the ECU starts kind of learning on what is needed you can increase the boost levels you are hitting but always remember to check what autotune did before you do any of that so maybe take a break every few kilometers every few miles and check what autotune actually did if it maybe needs a lot more fuel in some certain areas uh, then you can up that ve table in there and then continue to drive again and i would suggest only do longer pulls once you're VE table either is fully tuned or is at a level where the AFR ratios is or AFR ratio is very close to what you are targeting. It's also very important that you use very varying load so that the RPMs are steadily varying so you are not cruising at 3000 RPM at 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles for like 15 minutes because then all of the other RPMs won't do anything so it makes sense to maybe get to a somewhat curvy road or maybe even some city driving where there's not a lot of traffic still and where there's a lot of acceleration happening and where you can go through the gears or through the RPM. Through the gears is not as important but you need to hit all of the RPM spots as uh, you need to change the fueling in every cell uh, as with auto tune it doesn't tune where it didn't or where the uh, engine actually didn't hit the cells so that's very important as well one other thing that is pretty good to know and one thing to look out for because the ve table does not indicate any of that is your duty cycle for your injectors if you are not or if you are pretty close to the mi maximum of your injectors let's say you want to make 250 horsepower on a four cylinder car and only have 400 cc injectors that's cutting it pretty close so have a look at what your injector duty cycle is doing so that it does not go over like 90 percent or something uh, you can set a limiter in the ecu but if you're at 90 percent and the ecu wants to add more fuel in the ve table then that actually doesn't do anything and you will be out of injector the other thing around is when you for example are out of fuel pump which might happen in my tune as well because i still am on a stock fuel pump and that will be indicated by ve numbers changing really really quickly for example in my tune i am at 5000 rpm at 125 ve but at 5500 rpm i'm already above 150 and uh, at 6000 rpm i'm already at 160. so that might be an indicator of your fuel pressure dropping and your fuel pump not be being able to deliver enough fuel this can be even worse at higher boost levels and the values might increase even more so have a look at your duty cycle what that is saying if your duty cycle rapidly goes up while accelerating even though the boost level is at the same level then that might be a sign that your fuel pump is actually too small and you're running out of fuel pump just make sure that your AFR, AFR values in that case are still good because again if you run lean you could blow your engine at this stage I'm just driving around I drove about 60 to 70 kilometers which is about 40 30 to 40 miles just to hit every cell just to get the uh, issue to a point where it's pretty confident uh, then I changed to very hard difficulty to get the fine tuning in to a point where it actually is pretty spot on and then I actually touched on most of these cells um, by hand so I smoothed out everything a bit I lowered down the VE tables in the cells where I didn't 
hit them like on the very low rpms and on the very high boost levels because obviously i'm not able to hit uh 0 0.8 bar 12 psi at a thousand rpm but you want those levels obviously or those ve values obviously to be kind of matching to what the ve table needs to look like so just change them so they match to the rest of them and so you're VE table looks a little better. The same goes for higher boost levels. If you, for example, have gone above the value you set in the beginning and it is, ha has made it richer, you obviously want to put in a little bit more VE in the top rows where there is more boost to be hit so that the engine doesn't run lean. If, for example, a line to the wastegate pops off and you, for example, hit a little bit more boost than you actually want to, so that there's still some amount of safety. It's also crucial that you start with a low amount of boost, especially if you just turboed your car. For example, I'm running just 0.3 bar now, or like four, four to six PSI, just to get the car somewhat run, uh, running. And then I'm going to, first of all, change the springs in the wastegate actuator and then I'm going to go and uh, try to boost control my way up to the desired amount of boost I actually want. And that is going to be including some spark tuning with a knock tool, which I'm going to be uh, doing in future videos, which you should be excited about because that is really cool and something you should definitely do as well. That's it for this video though. I'm just showing a screenshot on what my final VE table for this four to six PSI tune does look like and um, as always does just don't copy it you always have to tune your own ve table or your own your own issue in general if you have any questions or anything else you want to add to this feel free to leave a comment or send me a message on instagram i always try to reply to everything and uh, as always that's it from me i wish a nice day and goodbye